Hey there, CJ and math students. So today we're going to walk through the patterns for multiplying and dividing integers. So uh, the rule is pretty simple. Uh, when you have the same signs, your answer is positive, SSP. Only for multiplication and division, though, because remember, negative uh, 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. However, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be positive 9. We'll talk about that in a second. When signs are different, your answer is negative. So different signs, only for multiplication and division, DSN, different signs, negative. So again, I could have something like negative three plus five that would give me positive two, but negative three times five will give me negative 15. And I really like how ST Math explains it. So um, they give you this thing, like a fraction like that, and then they uh, have it flip back and forth, back and forth. And, and here's how this works out. Um, basically, you can just follow the negative signs to your answer. So you can say, all right, um, this is a negative two-fourths, but what's the opposite of that? Positive two-fourths. What's the opposite of that? Negative two-fourths. So really, it's negative, positive, negative. And basically, this translates to negative two-fourths. But the reason why it's negative two-fourths is if you have an odd number of negatives, your answer is negative. So if I had one, if I had three, if I had five, if I had seven, all the way, all those odd numbers, my answer would be negative. So take a look at this one. We have um, negative, positive, negative, positive. So I translate to one half, and that's if I have an even number of negatives, like two, four, six, eight, or even zero. Uh, even number of negatives, uh, your answer is positive. So these are very simple rules. The trick is not getting them confused with the addition and subtraction rules. Again, this whole thing right here, you guys are going to start saying negative 3 plus negative 3. Oh, that's positive 6 because they're both negative, right? No, the addition rules are way different than the multiplication rules. Same signs add keep. Here, same signs means same signs, positive. So you've got to get in your head, all right, what operation am I doing? Am I adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? Okay, then use those set of rules. Um, so I got these problems from ST Math as well, the kind of post-quiz stuff. So uh, which one of the following is negative 9 plus negative 9 plus negative 9 plus negative 9? Well, the 9s are negative, and we have 4 of them. So basically this translates to 4 times negative 9. And that's how we get B. Uh, fill in the blank to make the statement true. So what number um, times negative 3 will give me negative 12? So this is a key blank here because I have one negative already. So this must be positive. Why do I know that? Because my answer is negative. In order for my answer to stay negative, I must plug in a positive number. Why? Because different signs gives me a negative answer. The same signs would give me a positive answer. So I can take anything that's a negative and take it out of the picture. Negative 4 is gone, negative 36 is gone. So is it 3 times 36 that gives me 12, or negative 3 times 4 that gives me negative 12? Your answer there, obviously, 4. Go ahead and try and walk through some of these. Uh, uh, on your own. I will go ahead and do number four with you. So this says negative four times x. We can assume x is like a question mark, right? Equals 28. When you have a number which is called a coefficient next to a variable, that's x, right next to each other, it means multiplication. So some number times negative four gives me positive 28. Again, key to understand that, hey, this is positive. What does that mean about this number? It must be negative, because negative times negative will give me positive. So um, anything that was uh, positive, you can take out. You're right, 4 times 7 is 28, but negative 4 times 7 it would give you negative 28. So that's gone. That's obviously gone. 24 times 4 in the first place, nowhere close to 28. So D is your only answer. Try and do this one on your own. All right, so each time Samantha rides the commuter train, she spends $4 for her fare. Spending money is negative, so negative 4. Write an entry that represents the change in Samantha's money for riding the commuter train to and from work for 13 days. Explain your reason. So spending money is negative. How many days should she do it? It was 13. This is a DSN, or different signs negative. I only have one negative, so my answer will be negative. 13 times 4. 2, carrier 1, 52, negative 52 dollars, all right? 
Um, are the answers to the three quotients below the same or different? Why or why not? So negative 14 divided by 7 should give me it's a DSN, different signs, negative, one negative, one positive, gives me negative 2. 14 divided by negative 7 should give me negative 2, right? DSN again, basically it was just take the negative sign in here, move it there. No matter which negative sign, it's not about which number is bigger, which number is smaller. It's if there is one negative sign, the answer is negative. If there's two negative signs, the answer is positive. Here, this says, all right, do 14 divided by 7 first, which is 2. Now take the opposite of that, which is negative 2. So these are all the same because we had one negative in every problem. One negative will always give us a negative answer. So the rule for determining if the answer will be positive or negative, if there are an even amount, two, four, six, eight uh, of negatives, your answer will always be positive. If there are an odd amount, one, three, five, seven, the answer will be negative. So here I want you to determine uh, whether the answer will be positive or negative, and then give me the answer. So we got one negative, two negatives, three negatives. Because I have three negatives, that's an odd number my answer will be negative. So put a negative sign right there and then just do this multiplication. This is 30 times 3 times 2 times 1. Notice how I no longer have any negative signs anymore. I don't care about them. I have a negative in my answer. I know my answer will be negative. This is 90 times 2 times 1. This is 180 times 1 equals 180. And guess what? You can multiply that in a different way if you want to. You'll still get the same answer. But your answer is not 180. It's negative 180. Right? So here, how many negatives do I have? I have one negative, two negatives. Two. Two is an even number. An even number will be positive. Positive. So I don't have to put a negative sign. I don't have to put a plus sign. Just multiply these numbers. I want to do uh, 6 times 1, which is 6. 12 times 2, which is 24. And then we'll do 24 times 6 off to the side. You can use your multiplication chart, etc. You get 144. All right, so do these on your own. Use your multiplication chart for here. This one should be super simple because there should be a zero in there. Anything times zero, no matter what you got, is zero. This one is a tad bit tricky because this says do this first, which is 30. Now take the opposite of it, which is negative 30, times 2 times negative 4. So now you can count how many negatives you have. All right? So here are the rules, same signs, add, keep, different signs, subtract, larger. Those are the addition, subtraction rules. Don't confuse these with the multiplication, division rules. Same signs, positive, different signs, negative. You don't have to worry about which number's bigger or smaller in this one. Here, you just have to say, hey, do I have um, the same signs? Great, they're positive. Do I have an even amount? Great, they're positive. Here, do I have just one negative or an odd amount of negatives? Great, it's negative, okay? Um, today, you'll be doing partner work in puzzles. Um, I want you to try and figure these out. It's both a mixture of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Basically what happens is negative 15 plus 7 gives you negative 8. Right? You fill in negative 8 and on 13 you put the letter T. 13 you put the letter T. Alright, good luck.